Okay, this is Stefan and I'll be your presenter for this video. I'm going to show you what is new for Kafka 2.1. Now there's a lot of new release and this is a very exciting one, but I want to do one of the first videos to just show you what you can expect, what will change in your code and the improvements you will get out of Kafka 2.1. If you like this video, please subscribe. I will also make sure to create more videos around what's new for the newer release of Kafka. If you like the format, if you don't, that's okay. I still tried. Okay, so let's get going. So as a first one, basically when you start with Kafka 2.1, there's one thing you should know. This is a quite a special upgrade. So if you upgrade to 2.1, what you need to know is that you will not be able to downgrade. Usually with Kafka, you are able to downgrade from an older version to a newer version and vice versa, but not with this one. With Kafka 2.1, you have to stay at 2.1. And the reason is because the consumer offsets topic has a schema change and you can't roll that back. So something super important to know when you go into this upgrade. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is going to be the Kafka internals. And the Kafka internals have had to me the most profound changes. So let's go ahead and deal with the first one. The first Kafka change we'll have is Kafka 2.1 is now available with Java 11. And that's a huge change. Why? Well, Java 11 was released in September 2018. And overall, what that means is that we get all the benefits from Java 11 into Kafka 2.1. That means that we get an improved SSL and TLS performance. So if you look at that tweet from the Apache Kafka, it seems like Ismail Juma, which is one of the main Kafka committer, looked at SSL TLS performance with Java 9, and it saw that it was improving 2.5x faster. So definitely using this improved JDK 11 will change how your brokers perform if they use SSL. Other than that, there is massive garbage collector improvement. So that means that G1 is now the default collector and that was the recommended watch for Kafka. And also G1 now can run in parallel. So it's possibly an improvement to have less long GC pauses. So overall pretty exciting. Other Java 11 goodies that you may not know about is that you can use the word var. So this allows you to reduce the amount of boilerplate code you'll have in your Java applications. So here's an example. If we create a Kafka producer, well, you can just do var producer equals new Kafka producer. You don't have to copy and paste this entire Kafka producer class to the left. So it's quite uh, more efficient to read. And then there's improvements with the future. So if you use features in your programming, you'll be happy with those. And finally, there is project Jigsaw, and this is to modularize Java. So in the end, what it allows you to do is that you have a little bit smaller compiled program binaries and more efficient runtimes. So all in all, pretty exciting, right? Another big change that's going on in Kafka is the fencing of zombie replicas. And so this is a rare data loss condition, but it could happen. And now with this KIP 320, it is completely gone. So consumers, when they do a dot poll to get data from Kafka, now they can get an offset out of range exception. And so it's pretty complicated, but if you want to know how to deal with it, how to deal with these exceptions, just see the KIP details. Okay, so that's it for the Kafka internals. Pretty easy, pretty fine changes, and overall really exciting. Now let's see what has changed for the Kafka clients. So for the Kafka clients, by far the biggest improvement is going to be Z standard compression, and that's KIP 110. And so Z standard is almost two years in the works for this KIP. It was created by Facebook in September 2016, and it is quite an awesome algorithm. The idea is that the compression ratio on the first pass is as good as gzip, which is known to have good compression ratio, except that if you look at the compression speed and decompression speed, that I mean how many megabytes can be encrypted or decrypted per second, then we have five times the performance of gzip, and that's huge. That means that standard Z standard is a huge improvement over gzip and a no brainer. Now in Kafka, is there any improvements as well? Well, yes, according to the KIP, we're seeing 4.28 compression ratio improvement, which is great. And Shopify, for example, is a Kafka user and in the production environment, they're using it and really seeing a massive decrease in CPU usage. And so what that means overall is that if you do use Z standard, then you'll get more throughput at a fraction of the cost. So it seems like in my pipelines, I will use Z standard and it seems like in your pipeline, you should use it too, but how do you do it? This is how. Well, for a producer, you basically need to have obviously the 2.1 client libraries. And the idea is that you have compression type equals the standard. Now for consumers, if it's an older consumer, you will get an error said unsupported compression type. So be very careful. 
And finally, if you have a newer consumer, obviously, just like any compression in Kafka, it will work out of the box. Something you should know, though, is that to use the standard compression, you don't need to just update the producers and consumers. You also need to update the broker, and that's something new. And so the bottom line is, if you do want to use the standard, then the first thing you have to do is to upgrade your consumers, then your broker, and then finally your producers to use this new compression algorithm. Now, another big one that's been going on for the clients is this expiration of consumer offsets. So there was a bug, which was that the consumer was still active, but not receiving data. If that was the case, it would still lose its consumer offsets after some time. And that's a big problem. Say there was just a dormant producer or a pipeline was down, but the consumer was still up, then you would lose your offsets. And so in case of a restart or a rebalance, the offset would just reset. And that means that either you have auto offset reset setting that would be set to um, latest or earliest, and that would result either in a data loss or duplicate reads. So this has been fixed in 2.1, which is really exciting. Now an active consumer will not get its consumer uh, offsets reset. And that's also a reason why we can't downgrade Kafka from 2.1 to 2.0. It's because of the changes in the consumer offsets topic. Now, the next thing I want to do is to talk about intuitive producer timeout. So this is quite interesting. Basically, beforehand, there was four settings, max block millisecond, linger millisecond, retry back off millisecond, request timeout millisecond, and all these settings were chained up to one another. And it was really hard to just define a setting saying, hey, I want to just provide a timeout for my entire send request. Now this is fixed, and so how does that work? Well, it works by just wrapping uh, all these settings into a new setting called delivery timeout millisecond, which provides an upper bound on how long you will wait until a message is delivered. So this is quite nice because now this timeout just helps you figure out how to go from all the way from batching to the sends. Okay, so this setting is defaulting to 120. And so this is meaning that two minutes is a default timeout for sending a request to Kafka, which is quite a large number. But if you set this to max long, so that means if you can wait indefinitely to for the request to make it to Kafka, then you can delegate the retry mechanism to the Kafka client itself, which is quite nice. By the way, for retries, big change as part of this skip. Now the default is max int. It used to be zero, but now it's max int. And this is quite a tricky change because now you can get out of order data if the sends get retried, unless two things. Either you set max in flight request per connection equals one, and that's perfect because then that means that only one request will be in, uh, in flight, and so that means that even with retries, there's no out of order. Or you need to enable item potence equals true, which through some dark magic allows max in flight request per connection to be equal to five and not have any out of order data. For Kafka streams, well, there are lots of changes, but none that I think are groundbreaking. And so the first one is that Kafka Streams has migrated all this API from a long millisecond times to duration. So you may get a lot of deprecation when you upgrade your Kafka Streams to 2.1. And then Kafka Streams, uh, as part of Keep 353, there is basically this mechanism to understand how to select the next record to process. It can be quite hard and non-deterministic if you use the old Kafka Streams, but now there is a setting called Max task idle millisecond, which is basically controlling how long we're willing to wait for the synchronization of timestamps across different partitions. And so by default is zero, so that favors latency and that favors the old behavior. But if you want to test out that setting and introduce maybe a little bit of latency at the uh, benefits of maybe synchronizing timestamps better between partitions, then put the setting to something a little bit higher. Other small changes, uh, we get an internal fix when using Window Byte Store. We get the possibility to extract topology description at runtime, which is a nice Java object and allows you to really understand how to make things work properly. And then KIP 3.3, which is adding an interface that was missing for retention period for sessions byte store supplier. And finally, when you have a store builder, you can now have a with caching disabled function on top of the with caching enabled function. But by the way, the default is still the same. Caching is disabled with your store builder. Okay, we're getting into security. So security has had some really amazing changes that I really like. Number one is that if you have a DNS 
and that you have a C name before your Kafka brokers. But now, thanks to KIP 235, we can now resolve that C name before authentication using the client DNS lookup equals true. And that basically allows you to be a bit more smart around how you use DNS with Kafka, even though it is secure. The number two KIP is also around DNS, it's KIP 302. And this KIP is basically saying that if a DNS record returns multiple IPs, then the clients can just resolve all the IPs and try all the IPs one by one to connect instead of just the first one. And that basically allows us to create some complex DNX records with a round robin and only give that to our clients. So it's pretty amazing. And for this, you need to use client DNS lookup equals use all DNS IPs. Finally, if you used ACLs and you wanted to use the list group API, you used to need to have a describe cluster ACL, which was really powerful. Now we just need a describe group ACL instead. Okay, last section is administration. So what's new? Well, there's some of admin improvements. There's going to be a lot of CLI improvements. Number one is going to be around KIP 308, which is a new CLI called Kafka Get Offsets. And this Get Offsets basically allows you to get offsets from uh, multiple topics at a time, including partitions. So it's quite nice. Keep 338 is uh, improving the Kafka topics.sh CLI, and you have a minus minus exclude internal option to exclude internal topics, uh, which was not achievable before unless you use some complex uh, regex uh, by parsing the output. So it's really, really nice. And then the Kafka reassign partition and Kafka log dir CLI now accept a file as a properties file input, which is something that already the consumer, the producer had. But now it's nice to see that uh, same logic implemented for other CLIs. Finally, the admin clients do expose metrics, but it was not accessible using an API. This is now fixed using KIP 324. We can just do dot metrics and get the admin client metrics the same way we can do it for producers and consumers already. So that's it guys for uh, the Kafka 2.1 release. To me, it's a really good one. It's mostly around stability and making sure everything is around the edges is really, really fixed. So I'm really excited. I definitely recommend you upgrade. And let me know in the comments if you like this. Let me know if you want to see more videos like that, if you have any questions or if I missed any features. I love feedback. So hope you guys liked it and I will see you in the next video.